Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out A Kneel Before Zod issue 5 by Joe Casey and Dan McDade. Zod's odyssey into the unknown continues as in the wake of destroying the Kund invasion force attacking New Kandor, Zod finds himself on the verge of death, quite literally reduced to a husk of himself as he floats through space. Casey begins the issue with a real neat flashback to Zod's troubled childhood and we get some really great looks into the house of Zod's traditions and we find that they are quite violent as Zod undergoes the same trial he gave his own son, exiled from his family so they can force him to grow an iron will and learn the harsh realities of the universe. We see a young Zod carve his house symbol into his chest before he meets Jor-El for the first time. I really love just how much of a difference the elves and Zods are on display here. We get to see Zod from this violent military house which is very primal and very you know, animalistic while Jor, the little bit we see of him, he's from that more refined scientific society and I like that we get to see more of that side of the people of Krypton and how they're scared of people like Zod because of how violent and militaristic they can be. Despite this, Jor tries to befriend Zod before turning on him and telling him that everything he touches withers and dies off. It's here we get a neat twist, that the entire flashback has been just a warped memory of Zod. This is something the book has been doing really well, where we get to see Zod's warped memory of Jor-El and how we know obviously Jor-El tried to help Zod and we know he tried to befriend him and everything, but Zod didn't see it that way and we're seeing it the way how Zod saw it, which is this man talking down to him and, and seeing him as less than himself. And I really like that Casey is continuing that through this issue. Zod is brought back to life by the people who rescued his corpse in the last issue. We find that Zod isn't fully healed thanks to low yellow sun energy and because, you know, he destroyed a white dwarf star starship engine and he was like right there when it blew up in his face so it's going to take a minute for him to heal even with his Kryptonian powers and thus we get this really cool Frankenstein's monster style creature who can't even talk and just has this house of Zod symbol carved into his chest and he's just grunting and groaning as he frees himself from this medical equipment and begins a rampage through the the ship, destroying security robots and aliens alike. I absolutely love the shift here into monster movie territory with Zod. He's now stripped down to his most base characterization, a violent superpowered monster. And Casey lets Dan McDay's artwork tell most of the story, lying very little on the script and instead showing us this monstrous Zod blasting his way through the ship's defenses and then into the green one-eyed alien's command deck as said aliens try to futilely stop him in any way possible since they consider him salvage. Zod's new design is fantastic as well, it's just so simple, it's a fleshy homunculus mess and I love seeing it evolve over the issue until at the end he's got this great black cloak and a pair of Sting's underwear from Dune. It's a complete overhaul of a character that reflects where Zod is mentally right now and also the first real redesign Zod has had since the beginning of the new 52. People seem to forget that the Zod we've been seeing where he has like that sort of armor and black cloak, that's a new 52 design and he hasn't been redesigned in years. So this is like the first big sort of swing we've had with the character. So I'm really happy about that and I'm looking forward to seeing what he will look like after this, whether they go back to, you know, that more traditional Terrence Stamp look, you know, the you know the black one piece with like the goatee, or whether we get like a little bit more of a combination of that and the new 52, or a bit more of like the more classic DC look where he was a bit more of a general in, in terms of like the outfit he would wear, a bit more militaristic. I'm really looking forward to seeing where Joe Casey and Dan McDay get to take this character now that they have seemingly free reign on his new designs. Eventually Zod makes it to the ship's bridge and begins to talk again, although talking is the last thing he wants to do, killing the aliens who own the ship and taking control of it. Zod learns that the ship is a prison of sorts and is full of various inmates from across the galaxy, all who wear a special inhibitor collar around their neck to stop their various powers or strengths and just to basically keep them in line. Zod ends up freeing all of them and you think that maybe oh Zod's going to become like this sort of Moses character and sort of lead all of these people into like a new promised land and become like a messiah figure and it's like no that's not what's going to happen at all as Zod makes it very clear that just because the alien masters of these 
people are dead does not mean they are free, they just have a new master and that's him. And he's seemingly going to rule over them with an even more iron fist than the aliens before him. As it's revealed he's going to keep the inhibitor collars on and he threatens to set off the bombs or the, the device that's inside the inhibitor that will kill the inmate who wears it if any of them get out of line. Effectively giving him his own personal suicide squad here of hundreds of aliens which is a really neat direction for Zod because people might remember this Zod was on the Suicide Squad during the New 52 for a time. Zod aptly dubs this little group the Legion of Zod and while his end goal isn't really obvious, I'm willing to bet that it's going to be going after the United Planets as well as reach that end goal of him trying to refine that warrior he used to be that, that Ursa was trying to push him towards and I imagine he's going to be attacking other planets and just causing a bit of a nuisance around the place. Neil before Zod continues to be an excellent book and now has reinvented itself with its fifth issue, taking us off of New Candor and out into the galaxy with a new monstrous Zod who is intent on proving that he is still one of the most feared beings in the universe. I am going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Check it out if you haven't been, it's now the right time to do it. Five issues, it's really easy to pick up and really easy to understand. You don't need to understand a lot of the Superman lore of what's going on, it's wholly its own thing and it's been fantastic.